All right, friends, so we are going from Lightroom to Instagram. That's what these settings are for. Um, just watch this video real fast and you're going to get a lot of good tips on how to keep your image closest to what you want it to be and not giving Instagram as much leeway to adjust your image. What we're going to do is open up Lightroom and I just picked this one image just out of the blue. This we'll go with this one. Very important to say that these are raw images. They are not retouched. So just want to point that out. Okay. Now here's the image of Connor and Max, no retouching on their skin whatsoever. Just a few adjustments in the develop panel. And speaking of the develop panel, that's what we're going to go into right now. I am going to click that. You can also click R and get into the develop panel, but I clicked that and here we are. Now what you can do is go into the overlay crop feature. When you go into the overlay crop feature right here, what that does is drops this menu right here and you're going to go into Instagram's own um, criteria that they have set. So what Instagram is saying is to get the best image for them, for their platform. What you should do is make sure that the width is always going to be well, here's what it says. When you share a photo on Instagram, regardless of where you are using Instagram, iOS or Android, make sure that it's uploaded to the best quality resolution possible up to important up to a width of 1080 pixels. What Instagram is saying is here is the resolution that you are allowed in your cropping. As long as the width is always 1080 pixels. Okay. So we're going to go into the crop overlay tool and I'm going to go into not original, but custom. All right. When we go into custom, remember Instagram says four by five or five by four. Okay. But they also say like the other one is 1.91 by one, 1.91 by one. Let's try this one just because it's a little bit more unique. There you go. That's the cropping that Instagram is cool with. Okay. If you want the cinematic movie vibe. Now, of course you can move the crop up and down to see what it is. You can also grab the edges, shrink it, you know, really just find the right spot that you want for your image, how you want to post on Instagram. All right. I'm going to go ahead and just actually bring it out just a little bit more. And here we go. Now you also will have the chance right here on the angle to find an angle that you are happy with. All right, done. There we go. That's our new crop. So now that we've done this, we want to go into file. We want to hit export and I'm going to close all these up just so we can isolate what we're talking about right here. The first thing that I'm doing here is I'm uh, exporting these to desktop. You can go ahead and I think it would be smart if you're going to now export to Instagram this way, put it in a subfolder, name that subfolder Instagram or Instagram um, files. Simple, right? And it'll make a folder called Instagram files and everything will live there. My case, I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to put it on desktop. It doesn't matter where it lands. Make sure it's good just for organizational uh, purposes. All right. I'm going to go ahead and close this and go to the next one. But I want to tell you that when you're doing it, it doesn't have to, it could be closed or it could be open. I'm just doing it. So there are no other distractions. Now you can see on the file naming that the file is called 3655. That's cool, but let's make it even cooler and give it two big reasons why we want to rename this. Number one, Google does not know what to do with 3655. You want Google to register your image as much as possible. So you want them to categorize the images. You want them to categorize your blog posts and all of that. So what we're going to do is, so that's the first one. The second benefit is your own organizational benefits. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and rename to not file name, but custom name. In this case, we can call it, I, I wrote that earlier. So that's why I said that twins, um, blonde, black. No, let's just go twins Insta. No, whatever. Um, why am I doing this? Twins turtle turtle neck. All right, done. Okay. When we do that, the file is going to be renamed now to twins turtleneck.jpg. 
so much easier for Google to be able to register that into an image that could come up in a search. But also, if you have a huge folder of images, you're like, okay, where was that? What campaign was that? You know what? I remember that it was the twins and they're wearing turtlenecks. Type in any of the keywords, this image should come up. All right, I'm going to close this again. You guys don't have to close it for when you're doing it. I just want to isolate any distractions. We're going to skip video. Obviously, it's not video. File settings is really important. OK, if you ever wondered why your image loses color or changes color when you upload it to Instagram versus what it looks like on your computer screen, you want to make sure that it's on sRGB, not anything else. So sRGB, JPEG, whatever, you just want to put in JPEG. Now, as far file size limit, you can leave that part alone right here. But quality, oops, quality can be anything. I don't think you should go below 74, 75. I'm just going to go about 85 just to make sure. You can go 100, but really there's no big difference. So if file size is important for your phone, then let's just go at 85. Okay. Again, that part is up to you, but don't go below 75 ish. Now image size, image size is important. What you want to do is two things here. Click the resize to fit and you don't want to do dimensions, don't want to do long edge, don't want to do short edge or megapixels, go width and height. All right. When you do that, remember Instagram really is picky about the width and what did they say? 1080 pixels, not inches, not centimeters, just pixels. The height doesn't matter as much. Okay. It's the width that they care about. So if you are, I don't know, 12, hundred they're going to go ahead and resize you and it's going to distort your picture so stay in that 1080 width pixels that they want and then resolution 300 is not necessary you can go 200 again we'll kind of split the difference ish i'm just going to go 240 because they did say as high resolution as possible 300 is overkill but if you want to do 300 do 300 okay and then we're going to close this one up now normally first i only sharpen um, a little bit in post, just a little bit, never in camera, but I don't sharpen for export except for Instagram. So for Instagram, the output sharpening, I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to say screen, not matte, not glossy for screen and amount standard or high. Just keep it a standard. Okay. For Instagram, you want to ask for sharpening for the screen and this is so important. Metadata. Metadata is so key. When you ever, if, have you ever maybe airdropped a picture or sent yourself a picture to your phone and then you can't find it in your gallery and you're, and you're thinking, what the heck? I actually just sent this picture. It should be my most recent pictures, but the metadata is stored as the original timestamp. Okay. So it's going to go way up to whenever you shot it. So hopefully you remember it. It's a little bit harder to find in your phone gallery. So what we want to do is just do copyright only. That's so, so important. Copyright only. You don't necessarily want to do copyright and um, storing any of the other metadata or anything real simple. Okay. Copyright only watermarking entirely up to you. Um, this is important. I watermark. I will not watermark for Instagram and I don't suggest you do either. All right. But I'm going to, while we're here, I'm going to show you some watermark features. I go raw only raw 10 and WA for Walid Azami 20. The, the 20 is 20% opacity. 10 is 20, 10% opacity and raw only is some, it's about 10 or 12% opacity also. Okay. The reason why uh, now remember for Instagram, we are not doing watermarking, but the reason why I'd say raw only is because if I put property of Walid Azami, copyright Walid Azami, it pretty much says, I don't trust you. You're going to steal. So I need to tell everybody this belongs to me. We don't want to do that. That's not good business. But if I say raw only, it's letting them know this image is not retouched. That tells a client, oh, what the photographer is saying to me is this is not the final image. This is raw only. It's a matter of confusion or uh, just so that they're not confused. What they're not reading into it is this person doesn't trust me. So they have to slap their name all over it. 
okay? But again, that was here. I just want to talk about it. But for watermarking, we're just going to go ahead and say no to watermarking. Post-processing, no post-processing either. Export that, and that is it. So when we open it, there you go. That is it for Instagram, okay? Um, I hope that helps you guys.